Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Glow. Apologies, Frank, for the little battery uh, mess up, but I wouldn't have wanted to record an interview without any sound, so uh, I'm glad we've sorted that now. Well, some people might have preferred that, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't think so, Frank, don't think so. Of course, uh, I just walked in to the office and I saw on Twitter that uh, Ajit Kabayo, um just needs to essentially return his contract. He's got 24 hours for that fight with Tyson Fury on December the 5th, Frank. What can you tell us? That's right, the contract's uh, gone off, has gone off to him, so hopefully in the next 24 hours, um, we'll get it here, get it back. We've agreed the terms, and I just want to get it over the line there. You know, the date for the 5th of December was announced by Bob Aram, top rank, a couple of weeks ago. So we've been moving and working on that date for the fight at the out, right out at home. So essentially, uh, financial terms, etc., have been agreed just needs to return that contract? Correct. Okay, and uh, that has to be within 24 hours, yeah? Well, we've got 24 hours, you know, to get it over, get it back, and if we don't, we'll move on. Okay, good to hear. In terms of the undercard, uh, Yard Arthur um, hasn't been formally announced yet. Um, when can we expect one, Frank? We'll be announcing everything this week. Okay. We're only five weeks away, but the boys are training for that date, so you can assume that it will be one of the announcements we make in this week. Of course, uh, along with that card to end the year, you've got um, Efron Bentley too and Dubois Joyce. Now, uh, on the weekend when these reports were coming out about a new lockdown, which obviously is going to take place uh, from Thursday, uh, all uh, sports fans and uh, boxing fans were, were very concerned um, whether it would affect anything. Can you tell us if it affects anything in boxing? No. Um, elite sports such as boxing will be uh, continuing. We've announced our dates and now all those dates will happen unless... For any reason, the government changed their mind. But as it stands up today, all those events will take place and will be broadcast on BT. We know gyms are shutting off uh, to the public, so I'm guessing fighters are going to get exemptions. It would be the same as, same as footballers. It's exactly the situation. You know, the football clubs train and their, fight, their uh, players train. Same as the boxers will do the same thing. They only go through the stringent test and uh, protocol that we, we've been... We've had in place for all of our shows up to us yet during the uh, pandemic. In terms of hotels as well, what's the situation with that, Frank? The guys are working on that in the office. I'm hoping that's all going to be that be dealt with. We will we will make sure it all works out. Right, before we talk about those three cards I mentioned, let's go back to the weekend. Of course, we had uh, Usyk Chisora, but just before that, hours before that fight, um, all boxing fans were talking about Deontay Wilder. He released the video. He finally spoke after that uh, Tyson Fury loss. Let's split the video in two. First, let's address the um, comments he made about Mark Breeland, where he believes he spiked his water, called him disloyal, and that's why his uh, legs were weak. What did you make of that? Oh, he said that Mark Breeland spiked his water. <sighs> Maybe, well, I don't believe that that's the case. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if he did. Um, maybe the water that he's drinking now spikes with the things he's coming out of. I've got no idea, but Mark Breland, uh, look, no matter which way you want to look at it, and he may not want to acknowledge it, and I like Deontay, I've got a lot of time for him. He's been a great champion, and he was beaten by the better man in Tyson Fury. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the Mark saved him from himself, because if he had not stopped that fight, he would have been even hurt he was in a bit worse situation than he was on the night. Mm. He, he should look on Mark as a friend for what he'd done for him. Well, of course, he, he sacked him a few weeks ago, didn't he? So. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, uh, the second part that everyone's talking about in that video is he's accused Tyson Fury of glove tampering, cheating um, for that rematch which took place in Las Vegas. Well, look, we've had heavy suits, we've had Mark Breland. Um, and now the weights. I mean, you know, this guy, didn't, it's like the one of those stories. If it weren't for bad luck, he wouldn't have any. I mean, all these all these stories and whatever, he's, he's basically he's demeaning himself and, and people will lose respect for him if he gets coming out with this stuff. Just so the fans know what happens, when a boxer, when two guys are fighting for a world title, um, as happened in Vegas and happens in most places around the world, that a representative from each of the other side um, watches the boxers, the respective boxers, hands being wrapped or bandaged by their trainers, 
These are then signed by the representative from the local commission, which was the Vegas Commission in that case. When the boxers put their gloves on, they watched them being gloved up. And then round the top of the glove where the laces are, they're normally taped up. And again, these are signed sometimes by the referee or by an official from the um, uh, governing body. So that's what happened. To talk about weights is ridiculous and beyond stupid. Of course, Nevada Commission is known as one of the strictest commissions in boxing anyway. So. But it just doesn't happen. It's like it's something out of a bloody, you know, what you, like an, an old horseshoe being in the glove. It's just garbage. It's stupid talk. And, you know, we spend, actually, we spend a lot of time talking about a load of rubbish. It's just garbage. It's ridiculous. You know, Tyson, anyone should scream it was Tyson for the first fight. He was robbed in California. Absolutely robbed. Terrible decision. But you know what Tyson did about that? He was a man. He never said a word. Never made one complaint about it. Just got on with it and put the wrong right in the second fight by doing an absolute job on Deontay. That's what happened. And Mark Breland saved him from further punishment. Yeah, I remember in Los Angeles he did that uh, interview straight after in the ring and he even said that I don't want to cause a fuss because a lot of my fans here and they might smash the place up. So, yeah, that's what happened. And to address the glove thing, of course, BT actually filmed it. J.D. as the well, there head you go. trainer was there. There you go. So you got it. And if, you know, let's send a copy of it to, to Deontay and that might satisfy his mind. He's got all these things obviously in his head at the moment. It's a shame. There's a serious accusation to make against Bob Bennett and the Nevada Commission. Though. Well, they are. And uh, they're stupid things to do. So who knows? I said maybe he was drinking some spiked water. Just the last one on this. Of course, you know Shelley Finkel very well. He's around him. Al Heyman's around him. Um, people who have been in the industry for a long time, shrewd people as well. Surely they must be saying, like, you can't come out with this. He surely he's running this I've got to tell you something, Umar. You can't, you, you, know, you, you know, you can't be with someone 24-7. I'm sure that Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel, certainly Shelley, but would disassociate you know, themselves from any of those ridiculous claims. Mm. OK, enough on that. Let's move on. Of course, um, actually, I've got to say one thing on that, Frank. Team Wilder are... Suggesting they might file a lawsuit for that third fight night happening. Well, they're going to file a lawsuit. They're going to file a lawsuit. In the meantime, Tyson will fight on the fifth of December. Okay, that's that one. Yeah, let's uh, preview the the cards you got before that Fury card. So uh, Efron Bentley two, uh, not long to go now for that rematch. No, it's a cracker. I can't wait for that. It was such an exciting fight the first time round. Um, I've never come. I, I can't recall in my time in boxing, three judges giving a a draw. All of them agreed it was a draw. And I actually felt it was a draw. And some people felt, you know, went to, uh, to Denzel. Other people felt Mark had won it. But, you know, there was a case for both ways, depending on how you score a fight, how you look at um, styles and so forth. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is we've made a rematch for which, for, for a fight that's probably one of the candidates for fight of the year. So we got it again to come. And I'm sure... The fact that both guys have shared a ring together and they know each other's style now, it'd probably be an even better fight. Of course, just to add to that as well, the British title will be on the line. Exactly, right. exactly. And you think all those great British middleweight titles over the years, all the great fighters have, who've, who've fought for that belt, and this will be up there with them. Yeah. Tommy Fury is back in action as well on yeah. that card. Yeah, I'm pleased Tommy's back. He's getting, he's gonna, he's getting a, a run out and... Uh, you know, we're all looking forward to him. I think Tommy's got a great future. He's been training very hard up with, uh, with his brother Tyson and with Sugar Hill. So uh, he'll be learning a lot from that. And, and obviously his dad John's involved. So I'm looking forward to seeing Tommy back in action and keeping him busy. Of course, uh, two Saturdays after that, it's the big one. Uh, Triple D goes up against the, the juggernaut and both are extremely confident going into this. Pure 50-50. Do you know what? It's a funny thing. Both have self tremendous self-belief. Bo both of them believe they've got... They they've got what it takes to beat the other. And that's great. It's not like, you know, sometimes you see a couple of fighters, you know, at the weigh-in or the, or the uh, press conference, and you sense that one feels he's not got what it takes to do it. But these guys have got tremendous self-belief. And I think we're going to get a tremendous, tremendous fight against two undefeated heavyweights, world-class heavyweights. And the winner of it is going to go on to some, some really great things. And it won't be the end of the world for the loser either. Well, of course, uh, it's a brilliant fight, and as you said, the, the winner, um, there's a lot of implications for them. And of course, we saw Alexander Rusik 
uh, in his second fight at heavyweight uh, on the weekend. We're victorious against Derek Shaw. Let's quickly just talk about that. What did you make of the fight, Frank? Well, I thought Usyk, um, listen, he's, he was a tremendous cruiserweight. I mean, you know, outstanding, outstanding. And he's come up a weight and he's fought Chad Willerspoon, who I think was out for about 18 months, maybe two years, and had, I'm not sure how many fights he had in between. Stopped him in seven rounds. And he's in with Derek. And, you know, Derek is, uh, we know what Derek's capable of doing. He always fights hard enough to come second. And he did the same thing there. You know, he, he pressed him and pressed him. What Looking at the fight, I see that Usyk, um, I think, I don't, he's not going to get his own way with the likes of fighting somebody like Tyson or Anthony Joshua. You know, that weight disparity, because he's, he's like, what's he, 33 years of age. He's got at that age to go up and become a heavyweight. Normally, if you do it a little bit younger than that, your body can grow into it. And you can imagine the weight he weighed, he's probably eating normally. He wasn't having to cut back and so forth like he would have to do to make a weight as cruiserweight. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really, really good quality fighter, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's got to beat the Tyson Fury. And if AJ was not to fight him, then he's num then the, the vacant title would be, be as it stands now would be between him and Daniel Dubois, who's obviously fighting Joe. And I would have no pressure problem whatsoever putting Daniel Dubois in or Joe Joyce with him at any time. And I both think they got the beating of him. I was just that's why I asked about Uzi's performance. Of course, uh, Dubois is just behind him in the WBO. But I said it before that fight I fancied him to beat him. I, I, I fancy. I just think it'd be too strong, too big for him. He's very smart. You know, he's fast. He's very smart. But you've got to do that over twelve rounds, and you've got a big guy in there, especially guys who are big punchers, and and can box a bit as well themselves. And they're not slow. You know, Derek's quite predictable what he does. You look at Derek. I mean, you know, he's every time he steps up to the plate in one of these fights, he he, he gives a good account of himself, a very good account of himself. But he doesn't come through at the end. You know, he did the same thing against Klitschko. He pushed Klitschko, probably his toughest fight that he had since he fought Lennox Lewis. But he just didn't come through at the end. And he's no younger now. And you think what Tyson did with Derek all those years ago. You know, he was a young man, he fought him the first time. Second time, was he 30 years ago? Six, six, he was six years younger, Derek. And think what he did with him. You know, he never won a second of any round. So, you know, you look at... It's, I mean, you look in this country, look at our everywhere, so we're gauging what Usyk is based upon Derek Chisora. You've got the two heavyweights, you've got Tyson, AJ, you've got Daniel, you've got Joe Joyce. Coming off after that, you've got um, uh, White. Then you've got, back in the mix now, you've got with Nathan Gorman. And you've got Derek. So Derek's not even in the top five and give him that fight. So you think of him in with the other guys, I think that all of them have got a great chance against him. Well, we've got four weeks in a row where a lot will be found out. Of course, we've got Dubois Joyce on the yeah. 28th. We've got the week before, White Povetkin too. Um, Fury v. Earl looks like Kabi at the moment. Of course, Joshua Pulev. So it's all going to unfold by the end of this year. Well, it is. It's all, it's all uh, it's, it's a very interesting times in the heavyweight division. And do you know what? All the fights happening in the UK, the capital of heavyweight boxing in the world. All in London, yeah. 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 Okay, Frank, I will ask you uh, the same night. BT are putting on a, a pay-per-view, of course, with Mike Tyson and, and yep. Roy Jones Jr. Thoughts on this, Frank? Well, it's not a fight for me, is it? It is what it is. It's, an it's, it's called an exhibition match. I don't know what these two guys are going to do when they get in the ring. I'm against anybody at that age getting into the ring and fighting. Um, it is what it is. You know, that BT have done a, done a deal with them to buy the fight. That's what they've done. Um, I don't think people at age should be boxing. Well, so I'm, not, I'm not going to come back and say any different. I don't, I'm, I don't agree with it. They've seen better, certainly Mike Tyson's seen much better days. We'll just make it clear that, of course, Dubois Joyce is on BT Sport, not on pay That's not pay-per-view, yeah. yeah. But if you want to watch Tyson and Roy Jones, you, you want to watch it, you know what to do. <laughs> Frank, uh, it's been announced that DAZN uh, will be launching globally, and that does include uh, the UK. Just uh, your thoughts on another network here in the UK? It's great for boxing. The more, the merrier. You know, we're all we're all for it. Um, I think they I think they're forced into that position, aren't they? With what's gone down with the pandemic, and obviously uh, 
they've had to cut back tremendously, and obviously they they they've uh, they've got to come out come out with something now to to basically tell the market they're doing something. So you know, good luck to them. There's been a lot. Of What's going to happen with the, with Sky and Hearn shows on Sky or Matram shows? And with the zone, isn't there going to be a conflict of interest there? I believe that um, Matram have or are going to renew their contract with Sky. But what about the zone in the UK? M- Matram shows won't be on there if they if they renew it with Sky. Really? Mm. So that that Ryan Garcia Luke Campbell fight is obviously a Golden Boy show. So that will go on. Yeah, week. I understand yeah. it. I get that. Yeah. But Matram, I think they're renewing the contract with Sky. Okay. Yeah, well, whatever it is, it is. There's been a lot of talk about uh, networks in, in boxing, given the situation we're in at the moment. I'm wondering, did you see Joe Gallagher's comments about Sky? Uh, did, uh, somebody pointed them out to me, yeah, about Sky, what, saying they were racist. Y- yeah, he did say that. I think he's taken that back now and apologised. Well, that's a bit stupid comment to make, that was. But, um, you know, of course they're not. I mean, I don't believe I, I, I don't say, what, what else did he say? Well, he, he said that, Fighters shouldn't be taking pay cuts. It, he was saying that that the Sky are, are not getting his fighters out. He's stable and, and they're, they're cutting pay when Premier League players and Formula One drivers aren't getting pay cuts in this environment. That's what he said. Well, he knows what he can do then, don't he? But obviously, of course, then Eddie hit back and said, if you've lost the gate, you've lost 40% of the revenue for the show. So 40%? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it depends. I mean, if you're talking about real big, big, big shows, yeah. Um, I don't know about. Th- I, I wouldn't. I think that's quite a high number. But look, everybody's got to cut their cloth at- accordingly. We're in a. We're in a. In 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 strange circumstances. You know, the old model isn't what it was, and now we're we're just working with revenue from TV and sponsorship. That's what we do. Um, if Joe's unhappy. Uh, and I understand he's, he wanted an apology, didn't he? Uh, or Matron wanted an apology for him? I believe or he's apologised about the, the racist comment, not about the pay cut situation. No? Well, then he needs to, if he's, not, if, he's got, if he's got a contract with him, then, he, then he's got a legally binding contract. If he hasn't got a contract, there's lots of other options for him. All your fighters and, and yourself, of course, are happy with what BT have done in this situation? I'm happy with what we have, we have, BT have honoured their agreement with us and vice versa. You know, there's been a couple of things that we've had to change a bit because obviously we've lost, we, you know, we have lost the gate, but um, invariably we've done the best we can to make sure everybody's getting work and delivering regularly for them and ensuring that they uh, they get paid well. Now, Frank, we're in uh, early November. Of course, the last time I spoke to you, I think we said about you and Eddie potentially meeting in September. He came down with coronavirus. Of course, he's, he's recovered, he, he's well. Uh, now he's had a couple of shows since then. Are we still meeting anywhere? Well, I haven't heard from him, but we're locked down, aren't we, on Thursday? <laughs> well, it's Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, they've got my number. He's got my number. I was waiting, it was left that he was going to come back to me. I suppose you haven't read his book, have you? No, somebody pointed out something to me in his book, though. They showed me, um, who was it, or, or sent me a, 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 a photograph of something, and it was about how he convinced Sky to get rid of Frank Maloney, Ricky Hatton, and myself, so that he took over boxing, which is to- totally, totally untrue. Is a lie. You know, we left um, Sky back in 2011 to start Box Nation. And in fact, our first uh, show was in, I think it was on September the 30th, which was um, at York Hall, um, Walsh Appleby, which I think was one of the fights of the year. And then we did Bello, Bellu and Cleverly. And our contract wasn't due to end, I don't think. I think we had about a good nine months, might even been a year left on it when we decided what we was doing. So we walked away, we left, didn't do any more shows. So he didn't replace us, we'd gone. We'd gone and I think you look at, you only got to look at, it's very easy, look at the dates when he did his first show and when they um, blew out Maloney and, uh, and, and Ricky's company. Look at the dates. It's just totally untrue and inaccurate. And the problem is, we keep saying all this stuff, people believe it's true. But it wasn't. That's not what happened. Barney Francis, at that time when I'd gone, and one of the reasons we set up Box Nation was because he turned around and said to us, because of the crap, the crap that he got from Audley Harrison fighting David Hay 
and how bad it was and the problems they had with it, that they wouldn't be doing any more pay-per-view. That's when I made my decision to walk away. We, they didn't fire us, we fired them. Okay. Okay, Frank Warren, um, is there anything you'd like to add before we go? Uh, no, I think we're all good. Is there anything you didn't think of? Did you see uh, Javonta Davis' knockout? Good knockout, wasn't it? Yeah. He, but, he's, you know, he's so hot and cold. Who tank? Yeah, he's so hot and cold. He's had, he had that good performance against... Well, we brought him over, didn't we? We yeah, did the fight. box. Yeah. He had a good performance there, and then he had a, then he looked, didn't look so good there, but that was... He's come back, and he's, he's looking good. Mm. If he focuses, he's a good fighter. If he focuses. What else happened on the weekend? Usyk has already talked about... Oh, of course... Um, we had uh, Arsenal winning that Old Trafford. It's been a while since. I'll tell break. you what. The first half, I thought we should have been two or three up. We were very, very, um, very unlucky not to score a few. I thought we we was we were playing really well, but um, you know, Man United didn't look so good. But they were coming off a five zero win, weren't they? In the week, they had a good win in the Champions League. They beat Leipzig. Le Leipzig, 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 the Bundesliga. Yeah, they? yeah. they'd done a job on them. So uh, you know, we did well. Arsenal to do that. Arteta seemed to have gotten firing. I love the the new signings, you know. I like Barthe, and I thought um, I thought even Ellen had a he had a he had a good game at the back, and I like the uh, Gabriel. Mm. So they believe it or not, we've got we've let in less goals than anybody else in the Premiership at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, I oh. think we've let in seven. Having said that, I'll probably completely box them now, and they'll probably get <laughs> crashed next week. Who knows? Well, of course, uh, during lockdown, at least we have got the Premier League, yeah. and of course, uh, and you've got BT boxing. We have indeed. Yeah. Uh, I said three shows uh, before the end of the year. Yeah, Frank, thank you very much for coming to IFL TV. It's a pleasure, mate. And uh, we'll catch up next week during Fight Week. See you then. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt. <laughs>